Do you often find yourself affected by the moods of those around you? Can you instantly pick up on the emotions in a room, even if no words are spoken? Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the energies of public places? If you answered yes, you're probably an empath. It is no coincidence that you came across this video. The entire Empath Collective is being called to redefine their empathic abilities. What I'm about to reveal in this video will entirely shift the way you perceive yourself and your interactions with the world. It's a deep exploration of how you present yourself to others and a chance to heal at your core, freeing you from the gravitational pull of outer draining influences. Now, some people might already see being an empath as a superpower, but not in a flashy, egotistical superhero way. Think of it more as a unique gift. A gift that, when you harness it correctly, you can have extraordinary positive results, especially in certain professions. Imagine having the extraordinary capacity to foster deep healing in others, truly understanding their emotions. This ability can make you an intuitive master in decoding people's behaviors and actions. It is your journey, rooted in childhood survival, honed your intelligence in navigating the intricate dynamics of human interaction. However, beneath this extraordinary gift lies a core trauma. Our empathic skills often originate as a survival mechanism developed in our early years to meet our needs and feel secure. If you don't know how to harness this incredible power of an empath, it can also become the curse of your life, pushing you behind in the darkness. That same dark place you are trying so hard to come out of. The curse of this gift is that it often leads to self-abandonment as we continually tune into others, seeking their approval, validation and happiness. This can inadvertently drive us to manipulate and control our circumstances unconsciously, all with the purpose of receiving something in return. Many times this behavior is fueled by an unidentifiable force that compels us to please everyone, making it hard to say no without feeling their disappointment. But the path to healing is clear. It's about balancing the superpower and the curse, neither embracing nor rejecting it. Now is the time you get ready to acquire that skill to harness this superpower while detaching from the curse. This idea that being an empath is a superpower that comes from a curse has both eager supporters and critics as it challenges conventional beliefs. It is now time for reshaping the narrative surrounding empaths. It's not about inflating one's ego, but understanding that every successful person, empathic or not, has faced their own challenges. Sometimes the desire to prove oneself stems from a sense of self-judgment and not feeling good enough, forcing us to add value to the world and give without conditions. This perspective highlights the idea of giving to receive, which resonates deeply with empaths. By providing value to the world, you're indirectly meeting your own ego's needs. There are many facets to being an empath. So as we delve into this complex topic, you'll discover the secret to breaking free from this cycle of self-abandonment and finally feeling secure in your own skin. Imagine no longer needing to mold yourself to others' expectations, but instead embracing who you genuinely are. The empath's journey is a journey to inner healing, balance, and self-acceptance. While some may interpret this narrative as an egotistical claim, many empaths often struggle with the sense that something is inherently wrong with them. They struggle with feelings of shame, sometimes stemming from earlier childhood experiences where they felt not enough. However, this perceived lack can trigger people to give to the world, support others, and create a positive impact. This drive to make a difference may stem from a desire to prove one's worth or simply to add as much value as you can selflessly. You may feel like you are pouring yourself out completely to give to others. 
It's worth noting that the notion of giving to receive is intricately woven into the empathic experience. In a way, it can fulfill one's egoic needs, as the act of bestowing value to the world often returns with a deep sense of self-worth. This complex tapestry reveals itself as we delve into the deeper layers of being an empath. The curse and the superpower, clearly two sides of the same coin, force us to find the balance in the middle. This idea has unveiled the underlying energetic dynamics of empathy at its core. The idea of a superpower and a curse is simple yet very profound at the same time. When we were children, if we didn't feel safe, we adapted ourselves to the energy of our parents, morphing to meet their expectations. This adaptation led us to ascend from the lower three chakras, including the root, sacral and solar plexus, which are located beneath the heart chakra. Empaths relocated their energy up to the third eye intuitive center as a response to the difficult surroundings they often faced in their formative years. This shift allowed them to sense, understand, and adapt to their parents' energy and expectations, providing a facade of safety. However, this shift of energy away from the grounding points in the lower chakras led to a sense of disconnection from their true selves. As we proceed, we'll explore how empaths can strike a balance, returning to a place of self-acceptance and authenticity. The goal is to transcend the habitual pattern of abandoning yourself for the sake of others, ultimately rediscovering a secure and grounded sense of identity. Imagine the freedom of no longer needing to conform to external expectations and instead embracing your true, refined self. Only this harmonious reconnection with your innermost self has the ability to turn the curse into a real superpower. Consider the fascinating shift that occurs in empaths during their childhood, driven by a desire for their parents to feel secure and approve of them. This shift propels them into the realm of the third eye, blessing them with extraordinary intuition. You might recognize this intuitive trait in some spiritually inclined individuals, often represented by their impulsiveness and a lack of grounding. However, this intuitive power comes at a cost. The relocation from the foundational grounding lower chakras, including the root, sacral and solar plexus, can leave empaths feeling unanchored, like leaves in the wind. In their quest for safety and comfort, empaths find themselves always adjusting to the energy of others. This prompts relentless self-questioning. Who do I need to become to put this person at ease and, in turn, relax my own nervous system? This is the darkest cursed feeling someone can experience. Inevitably, this pattern leads to a cycle of self-abandonment. The empath feels compelled to sacrifice their true self in a bid to mold others' expectations, often in a subtle and subconscious manner. They unintentionally delve into secret manipulation and attempt to control things through strategic giving. And it's crucial to acknowledge that the perception of empathy as a superpower coexists with recognizing its problematic aspects. Many empaths are not ready to confront the inner turmoil that arises when they must confront and heal this deep-seated trauma. It is an urgent need to face and integrate this past trauma with healing. By processing these experiences, you can rediscover your core identity and reclaim the feeling of safety within your own body. Imagine a life where you feel entirely at ease in your own skin, free from the constant need to serve others' expectations. Imagine the ability to set boundaries with ease and authenticity. These possibilities are within your reach. While I initially captivated your interest by stating empathy as a superpower, it's crucial to acknowledge that this ability originates from a survival mechanism rooted in past trauma. Empathy now allows you to intuitively sense when someone needs something from you. To understand the dynamics of this energy, consider a brief example. 
Think of your interactions with different comedians performing at a comedy club. You will be able to sense the difference in energy, akin to the two different approaches, as they each navigated their unique performances. At a comedy show, there was a comedian who exuded authenticity and vulnerability. He candidly admitted he had no new material and was merely testing some jokes. Despite his honesty, he had the audience in stitches expressing himself freely. Even when a joke fell flat, he remained unattached to the outcome, simply acknowledging it. His unshakable self-assuredness was captivating and hilarious. On the other side, later in the show, another comedian took the stage. He was visibly low energy and portrayed a sloppier image. Throughout his stage time, he kept asking why the audience laughed harder for other comedians than for him, expressing feelings of rejection. The crowd sensed his desperate energy, creating a sense of discomfort as they waited for his performance to conclude. Many can relate to the friend who becomes excessively talkative when they're in a vulnerable state or drunk, seemingly feeding off your energy and attention. It's as if they're drawing energy from you. Now it's crucial to understand the energy dynamics at play in these examples and learn how to heal them. In the first scenario, the comedian was in his frame, enjoying the moment and not seeking external validation. In the second scenario, the comedian's energy was demanding approval and constantly seeking more from the audience. To understand the energetic contrast, picture it this way. Imagine a shadow figure representing a person. The figure's energy from the bottom three chakras constantly extends outward to acquire something. This external focus involves tuning into external factors and adjusting their inner selves to prevent the nervous system from experiencing discomfort. In essence, they're evading the internal tension and fear of abandonment. Rejection or abandonment is akin to death for someone with abandonment wounds. They go to great lengths to avoid rejection by continually modifying themselves to gain approval. The key to healing this lies in drawing the energy inward focusing on the lower three chakras and truly feeling the emotions to heal. When you tune into your own body and remain grounded within yourself, your energy shifts significantly. You operate from a different gravitational center. Consider it as if the attention you place within is where the energy's gravity is concentrated. When your awareness is directed inward, your energy becomes magnetic, emanating from within, creating a distinct and authentic presence that others can feel. Here's the key. Even if people don't necessarily agree with your decisions, they will respect them when they see that your actions are rooted in your genuine self. A significant shift in the journey of healing is needed as an empath. For example, Learn to say no honestly and confidently instead of crafting excuses or feeling guilty when saying no and declining someone. Tune into your own feelings and ask yourself, do I genuinely want to go or am I doing this out of fear of disappointing someone? Sometimes it can create tension and the other person may not like your answer, but you need to stand firm because you need to be true to yourself. It isn't about needing approval. It is about being authentic. So bringing your energy into the bottom three chakras and facing your emotions rather than avoiding them is the essential first step in this transformative process. There's a valuable technique called the frame technique that can be truly transformative. It's about feeling the separation between you and others rather than the connection. Many empaths have expanded their energetic fields to include everyone to feel safe. But in doing so, they may lose touch with their individuality. The frame technique is a powerful tool for this transformation. Meditation is something that can help you strengthen your own frame, heal codependency, and become emotionally available because empaths often believe they are emotionally available when they are not. The challenge is about becoming solid within yourself so that you can attract love or abundant opportunities into your life. It is not just about meditating, but also learning to differentiate between yourself and others. 
You need to practice this separation. You are separate from others, but you still feel connected because your energy field is so expanded. Meditation can help you feel secure within your own body and recognize that people's actions reflect their issues, not necessarily yours. It encourages you to take responsibility for your emotions, fundamentally changing how you interact with the world. The core challenge that many empaths face, stemming from their childhood experiences, is a lack of seeing themselves separately from their parents. They grew up feeling like they had to make their parents happy to be worthy or supported. The environment might not have been good enough to nurture their individuality, encouraging them to think for themselves. Through the framing technique, you can learn to feel the separation between yourself and others, and you can begin asking yourself, what do I think? How do I feel? What sensations do I experience in my body? Tuning into your inner self and paying attention to your emotions. This realization of the curse will lead you to connect with your inner child, understanding that by abandoning yourself for others, you are repeatedly neglecting your own inner child's needs. You have to stop that pattern and start valuing authenticity and vulnerability over seeking approval and validation from others. By being a more authentic version of yourself, expressing your truth and setting boundaries, you will experience a shift in your relationships. Though this may initially cause some tension, people will eventually start to respect you and energy and dynamics in the relationships will transform. It's important to remember that as you evolve into a new version of yourself, some individuals may naturally fall out of your life. This creates space for new connections that genuinely respect your energy. This is why empaths often attract narcissists. Narcissists have strong frames, albeit built on toxic energy and can be manipulative. Empaths are drawn to them as there's often a lesson to be learned. Narcissists will continually test your boundaries. The key, however, is to return to a balanced place where you have a healthy expression of self, feel inside your own body and understand who you truly are. This breaks the pattern. Awareness plays a significant role in this transformation. When you're aware of these patterns, you can consciously choose not to manipulate the external world to meet your desires. This shift involves approaching life with non-attachment to outcomes and a strong sense of presence, causing changes in all aspects of your life. If you want to explore further, you can find an inner child meditation on the Enhanced Meditation app. So commit to this practice for at least 21 days and observe the transformation in your life. If you want to watch more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel and download the Enhanced app for guided meditation, guided visualizations, affirmations, and much more. Find the download link in the description below. We'd love if you could give us a thumbs up and share your feedback in the comments section. Your support allows us to keep bringing you new content. Thank you again and see you in the next video.